We are back in the laundry lab. And in this video, I am sharing with you my top 10 laundry must haves. If I could only have 10 laundry products, these are it. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by my new website, thisandthatwithdenise.com. So go on over after this show and check it out and sign up for my meal planning bundle. And you can rest assured that your data is, is that, and you can rest assured that your information is safe with us. Okay, let's get into it. And let me just say too, during this live stream, my camera is set far enough away that I can't read the names or see the comments that the people are making. So once I presented the information, I'll come a little bit closer and then I'll do a little bit of greeting and then we'll answer a few questions and then we'll jump off. Okay, let's get started. So the very first product on my must have list falls under the detergent category and it is Paracel my Pro, Pro Clean Original, which gives me a very deep clean. And I really like the Purcell because it gives me 10 dimensions of clean. And when I take a look at what it says on the pack, it says stain fighting, whitening, brightening, anti-grain, clean rinsing. And that's really important that it rinses out cleanly. Long lasting freshness and the clothing does stay fresh smelling odor fighting, and if you've got some stinky gym clothes or urine smelling clothes, that could be helpful. And it also works in cold water. And you know, everything doesn't work well in cold water. And then the clean fresh scent, and it's also good for fiber care. So this is my all time favorite laundry detergent. And I like the fact that it's a liquid. I like to use a liquid laundry detergent, but My second all-time favorite is this one, and it is the Tide Power Pods. And the Tide is a three-in-one laundry detergent. It gives you cleaning, stain fighting, and it also gives you some freshening. So that's why I like this Tide. And I think oh, I grabbed the wrong one. I've got two tides up here, and this one is the three in one. And as I was saying earlier, you get the great cleaning, you get the stain fighting, and then you also get uh, the freshening and um, color, oops, and color fastness with your tide. Now, why do I have two different kinds if you can only have one? Well, both of these are the tide pods, but this one is the regular size pods. And one of the reasons why I like this particular container is because you've got the child proof cap. So it's really difficult to get off. And you know, the Tide, not just the Tide, but the detergent pods have been very harmful for little ones. So they cannot get this lid off. It was almost Denise proof. And if you missed the video where I struggled to get it off when I first got this new container, I'll link that um, in the description box. But I really like this. And these are just the regular size pods and you just drop them in uh, with your wash. Now, the difference between that one and this one is that these are the power pods. These are the extra large size. So with those, you would use one pod for a small load, two pods for a medium and three for extra large. With this one, you would just use the sizes for large and extra large. Now, why do I need to tie pods? Well, sometimes the hubby forgets where the detergent goes. And one day I did find where he had put detergent down the bleach dispenser. So when I have him use the pods, he knows they only go one place. You just throw it into the bottom of the uh, drum and that's all you have to do. So it works out well. So. I love the Tide Pods as well because, again, they give me a great clean. So I'm going to put those back there. Now, the second category of products, if I can only have 10, includes sanitizers and bleaches. And, of course, you got to have Clorox bleach 
in your laundry room. And notice this one is a disinfecting bleach. And you know, the bleach is really good to help whiten your clothing, but you can also use it to help disinfect uh, clothing as well as hard surfaces. So you can use it for cleaning other things besides in your washer. Now here's the thing about bleach though, you can only use it on color safe fabrics. And so, so many fabrics are not color safe. Now I like the fact that when I use it with the white, you can get a nice bright white, but if you use too much or overuse it, it can yellow the clothes just a little bit. So I am careful in that regard. But what else can you use to sanitize your clothing that is color fast? Is this one and it is the Lysol laundry sanitizer. And if you'll notice, there is no bleach. And while I'm here, I can see there's Eat to Live Strong. There's Janet Alvarado. May May is here. Artist Director Media. Hey, that's my little granddaughter Morgan is on, as well as Tara Miller. And then Bradford Homestead doesn't like Tide Pods. Well, okay. Everybody has a right to their opinion, but I love Tide Pods. I just make sure that the little ones can't get to them. Now, let's talk about this Lysol sanitizer. This laundry sanitizer is amazing. Not only does it sanitize your clothing, but it is also good for the coronavirus. But keep in mind that according to um, the uh, CDC, and I can't remember the other site, I, I, it just escaped my memory, but the fabric must be in contact with the solution for 15 minutes. So now this goes in your rinse cycle. It is not meant to go in the wash cycle. It is not a laundry booster. It goes in the rinse cycle and the directions will tell you to get, put two capfuls in the rinse cycle based upon whether or not it's a high efficiency washer or a regular washer. It tells you which level to use, but it goes in the rinse cycle only. So you need to check out your rinse cycle. If your rinse cycle is 15 minutes or longer, you're good to go. If your rinse cycle is shorter, then once the rinse cycle starts and then the um, solution has been dispensed in the clothing, stop the washer, let it sit for about 10 minutes and then start it up again and then let it finish its cycle. And the nice thing about this being bleach free is that you can use it on almost any clothing because it doesn't affect the color. Now, do make sure you read the directions because there may be two or three fabrics that you specifically should not use with this particular product. Okay, so we've looked at detergents, my top two favorite detergents. We've looked at bleaches and sanitizers. Now let's take a look at my all time favorite whitener. And that is this OxyClean White Revive. Now you talking about something that is all that and a bag of chips, that is this one. It is not only good for brightening whites, and I mean keeping your whites white, it's also good on colors because it helps to keep them nice and bright as well. When my husband is working, he has to wear white shirts and I'm old school. I do not believe in ring around the collar and those shirts have got to be bright white. And he had the whitest shirts on the job and I made sure that I kept it that way. Now, um, again, you can see right here, it says it is safe on colors. So that's another nice thing about this. And I have a lot of, um, dish towels that I use. I've got a whole bunch of those. And sometimes what I will do is I will just soak them in a solution of this just to kind of brighten them up if they're starting to get a little dingy. It just gets rid of that and I am good to go. So this is the whitener that I would recommend is this OxyClean White Revive. All right, so now what other product would you absolutely have to have? Well, you're probably thinking, well, fabric softener. So I had to decide since I could only have 10, I'm gonna go with vinegar. And so this particular one is Austin Cleaning Vinegar, but it could be 
any vinegar. It could be your Heinz vinegar. It could be any brand of vinegar. I just happen to have this one. Your cleaning vinegar is a little bit more acidic than the vinegar that we use for food consumption. And it does say on this bottle, not for consumption. But why do I want to use vinegar? Well, I use the vinegar in my fabric softener bin. It softens. It also helps to fight stains. So let's say you've got a stain on a product. You can put a little vinegar on it, give it a good scrub, and then you can kind of um, and let it sit for a little bit. That can help you ease the stain out. But it's also a great softener, particularly on towels and sheets and those kind of woolly, kind of thick, fleecy beddings, things like that. It is a great fabric softener. Now, why is that so? Well, because the vinegar helps to get rid of some of the residue that detergent can leave on the clothing. So if I can only have 10 products, then this vinegar is going to be one of them because not only can I use it to help soften and to help rid of, rid of residue, I can also use it to um, fight stains. Now let's look at other fabric softener products. These Woolsey wool dryer balls are amazing. And they're just exactly what it says. They are like little wool balls. They look like big tennis balls. And you just put all three of these in your dryer with a small to medium load of clothing and they bounce around the dryer with the clothing. So they kind of help keep the clothes from sticking together. It helps to reduce static clean and helps reduce wrinkles just a little bit. So they're really good. And it is a natural fabric softener. These woolly balls you can use up to 1000 times. And there's even instructions on here on how you can clean them. So I really like these Woolsey balls. And then if I was going to use a fabric a sheet, like dryer sheets in the dryer, then the only ones I buy is Bounce. And that's because they bring about a nice wrinkle-free and they also reduce static. Now, when I say wrinkle-free, for the most part, it depends upon what you've got in the wash. When I wash my aprons, most of them are some kind of a cotton or cotton linen blend. Those are not coming out wrinkle free and they have to be ironed. But most other clothing, it reduces the static clean and it reduces the wrinkles. If you get the clothes out of the dryer right away, get them hung up, it takes care of that. Now, if you use your dryer sheets, please make sure you dispose of them properly. Throw them away in your trash can. Some people used to think that you could put them out uh, and let the birds get them and build nests and that kind of thing with them. But that's a no, no, because there's chemicals that are in there that can be harmful to the birds. So make sure you dispose of them properly. And then some people have taken the fabric, so fabric softener dryer sheets and lined their, um, say their lingerie drawer or something like that. And they just give off a nice, pleasant little fragrance that way. So this last category was things that I might use to soften. So I might consider, I would use, I only use vinegar in my towels, in my sheets. I use the Woolsey balls for most other things. And then sometimes if I'm doing my husband's laundry, some of the heavy bulky kinds of things that he has, then I might use the dryer sheets for those because um, the Woolsey balls may not be quite heavy enough to take care of that large bulky load. So then the last items that I have would be what I might call laundry boosters. So the first one I want to talk about is this one. This is number nine. And this is my downy infusion. And it is the calm and it is the lavender and vanilla bean scent. And it helps to just relax you. It is so calming. And I like to use this sometimes in my towels and in my bed linens, because I just like the aroma, the fragrance that I get. And when you go to bed at night, you put your head on the pillow, it just smells so nice and it just kind of helps you to relax and go to sleep. So I like these um, infusions and they go in the wash cycle. You put them in the drum of the washer, how the aroma comes out in the clothes through the dryer, I don't know, but it goes completely through the wash, rinse cycle, put them in the dryer, and they still smell, smell nice and fresh. And you can get dryer sheets, if you so desired, 
that can help complement this flavor, this uh, scent. Or one of the things that I learned from Michelle at my everyday wife life is that you can put lavender on these woolsey balls and kind of infuse your laundry with a nice little lavender scent as well. So there's that. And then the last item on my top 10 must have list is borax. 20 mule teen borax. I love it, love it, love it. It is a very nice detergent booster. And now what does it say it's good for? This detergent booster and multi-purpose household cleaner helps remove stains and also neutralizes odors. So now borax is an old fashioned product. And I know my little granddaughter is on listening and they use borax to make slime. But grandma uses borax to help boost the, the cleaning power in clothing. So it does help fight stains. It helps to boost your, um, your detergent. And you can get a little bit more uh, brightening with this particular thing. Just put in a half a cup of borax with your regular load and you can throw it in with every load and you're good to go. You can also use it to help clean grout and different surfaces in your bathroom as well as in the kitchen. So your borax is an all purpose product. So these are my top 10 must have products in this laundry room. Now I do have an honorable mention This is an honorable mention. Now you're thinking, what the heck is that? Well, this is a stain fighting agent that I've made myself. There's two ounces of Dawn dishwashing liquid, two ounces of vinegar, and then two ounces of water to come up with this combination of a stain fighting solution. And I got the formula for that by watching a Rachel Ray show. They, she had this guy that manages a dry cleaners on there, and he was talking about just stain removing things that you could do at home and they work. So if you've got a lot of grubby, let's say your guy works somewhere and he wears a lot of jeans and they get pretty grubby, you can pour that on them in certain spots, give it a good scrub, let it sit for a little bit and then wash it and they come out so much nicer. I've been getting lots of email from some of my young men who've tried that on their work clothes and, it, and they said it actually works. And it does. Now, I've got a few other things up here in my laundry pantry. So if you're interested in knowing what other things I have up there, I do have a video where I actually gave you a tour of my laundry products. But I got to thinking if I could only have 10. And I stood here looking in here for a while thinking, which 10 would I choose? Then these are the 10 that I would choose. And like I said, I've got the honorable mention of my own stain fighter. And if you happen to be caring for someone who is sick with the coronavirus, I have a video where I show you how to care for the clothing of someone who's sick. So click in on the end card that I'll be putting up once the show is over to help you sort out, how do you manage laundry if someone is sick with the coronavirus? All right, so now let me come a little closer and I'll grab a seat. And then I can see who's here and see what people had to say, because before I was far enough that I couldn't really see. So let's see who's here. Uh, so Janet said she loves uh, anything laundry and stockpile items. So, you know, Janet, one of the things that I've been doing is stockpiling laundry detergent. So when I was sharing with you what I had up on my shelf, I've got a couple bottles of the Thai liquid as well that I also have set aside. And then, you know, I've got the two containers of the Thai, um, of the Thai pods. And then May May is just greeting me. Hey, May May, it's always good to see you. And then here's my little Morgan says, hey, grandma, it's my little Morgie. And I have to tell you, that is a smart young lady. And I think about her quite a bit because one day she was watching video with me and she said, well, when is she gonna start the video? And I said, well, she started. And she said, well, why is she still talking? And I'm like, oh, well, I guess she's just gonna talk. And she's like, hmm. And then she turned around and left the room. But what that reminded me of is that you just gotta jump right into it and get it going. So that's what I'm trying to do. And now there's Tara Miller and she says she likes Purcell too. 
that is my number one detergent, but Purcell is a little bit pricey. I must admit it's a little bit pricey, but I do like to go ahead and purchase it. So now Bradford Homestead says that she hears that pods are bad for the septic system. And you know, I believe that the pods um, disintegrate, so they should be okay. But I don't know, because I've not asked that question. And then there is someone named Danita who is saying hello and hey, how are you doing? And Fancy Schmancy Jump Joan. I just love that name, Fancy Schmancy. I think it is so cute. So how are you? And then Joetha is here from Metro Detroit. Hey, Joetha, it is good to have you here as well. And then Danita says she's picking up some OxyClean White Revive. She's never seen it before, honey. That OxyClean White, White Revive is the truth. That is how I keep my husband's white shirts white. I keep my towels white. And then I also have a set of white linens for the bed that I use for that. And I plan to do a video where I show how to whiten your bed sheets with those kinds of things. So yes, it is very good. And you can even make a paste with the um, Oxy White Revive because it's a powder and you can make a little paste with it if you need to and then kind of spread it on the collar of your shirts, your blouses to get rid of a ring around the collar. So that's why I didn't have the OxyClean gel stick, which is what I usually like to stamp on the ring around the collar. But I thought, okay, I can only have 10, so I can use the Oxy White Revive and make a paste for that same purpose. So I tried to think about what can serve multiple purposes. Okay, Kathy Carter is saying hello. And then Joetta said she only uses distilled vinegar as fabric softener and dryer balls in the dryer work so much better. Exactly, Joetta. I have just switched over. I completely use uh, vinegar on my towels and with my uh, sheets because it just really helps to soften them. And um, I'll use the fabric soft fabric softener dryer sheets in with my husband's fleeces and those kinds of things because they're so large and bulky. I just don't feel like the dryer balls get good, say bounce in those. And then Markhead Mark's gonna try those. So hey, uh, Mark, Marky Mark. So yeah, try those dryer balls. So Joetta said she heard the chemicals in bounce sheets are not safe for humans either, you know, but whenever you use chemicals when you're washing clothing, so in your towels and your sheets and all clothing, one of the things that happens is that they do leave a little bit of residue in the clothing. So that's why the vinegar is so good because it helps to get rid of some of that residue. Let's see. And Lisa Whitney says she uses unscented laundry detergent and dryer sheets. You know, Lisa, if you have people with a lot of allergies, that is probably the best bet because one of my sisters has some serious allergies to laundry detergents. There was a particular brand or a couple of different brands that she was using that was really causing her to not only break out, but to cause her mucous membranes to swell. And she had to be hospitalized a couple of times. So she's very careful about what she chooses and the scent free and that kind of thing is probably best for people with allergies. Now for as far as baby clothes are concerned though, I was doing my little niece uh, Zizi's, her, her clothing for a while when I was taking the Purcell challenge and I liked that video below too. And it worked out fine. It didn't cause her to have any allergies. The clothes came out bright white. It helped get rid of stains and they were very sweet smelling. Her mother was very well pleased. And then Kathy says she uses her dryer sheets to wipe off the lint trap. Oh, that's a good idea. Now, I have not thought to do that. I usually just pull the dryer sheet out and just kind of scrape um, the lint off of it. But using the dryer sheet to do that is an excellent idea. I like it. I'll have to give that a try. And then Janet said she loves OxyClean. I like OxyClean too. It really does a great job. And there are more and more detergents that have OxyClean in the makeup of that particular product. So Mark wants to know, can vinegar be used safely in both white and colored loads? Yes, you can use vinegar in both loads. Just keep in mind that the vinegar goes uh, in the rinse cycle. So you would put it in the bin where you put your fabric softener 
if you don't have a bin for fabric softener and you just have to put the fabric softener in uh, once the rinse cycle is filled, let's say you have an old fashioned washer, then you would put it in the water, you know, and let it kind of disperse that way. But yes, vinegar can be used in white loads as well as colored loads. And Joetha said she likes using borax for cleaning her bathroom tile. I've not used borax for that purpose, but I'm going to give it a try. And the yeah, artist director media, that's my son. And he said his kids use borax for slime. And my first box of borax that I had in the house for a while came because they were all here making slime and they left it here. And I thought, well, let me try this borax. I haven't used it for a while. And I remembered how much I used to love it. This is my son right here that's on the, this is the one that works in film and TV. Does the borax go in the drum with the clothes? I put the borax, well, this is what I do. I've got in my detergent bin, I've got a, a, a way that I use for liquid detergent or for powder detergent. If I'm using powder detergent, then I put the borax in that, um, in that bin with the powder detergent. Uh, because the borax needs to go, it goes in the drum of the washer or you can put it in your powder detergent bin. But if your bin is just for liquid detergent and you put it in that, it might just kind of gum up in there. So I would suggest that you put it, once your washer kind of gets kind of full and you've got the water in there, put it in there directly in there so it can kind of get dispersed that way. But if you've got a powder bin, put it in that. But it does go in with the clothing. And then Kathy said she uses her dryer sheets to clean the lint traps between loads and then it's not as messy. I'm going to try that. And then Joetta said she also uses the Dawn mixed with vinegar for stains and cleaning. I do too. And like I said, I got that idea from a Rachel Ray show and I will link it in the description box below once I'm able to do that. And uh, ever since I saw it, I've been a believer because it really does work as well as you can use it to um, clean in your bathroom. So I put some in a spray bottle. And so when I'm doing my cleaning, like my morning swish and swipe, that's what I'm using. Oh, listen to my son said I need my own TV show. This is it. Oh, so uh, Fancy said she sent me an email. She finally put together her own pantry and she thought of me the whole time. Fancy, send me a picture of your finished product and I'll put it on my community tab to let people see how you were inspired for this declutter in January and you got something done in your home. And that's the nice thing. That's the thing that I hope to do. I want to help you young maker, young homemakers be inspired to you know, get some things done in your home to help you either figure out a routine to share with you the knowledge that I've acquired from managing a home for more than 45 years. Uh, oh, my goodness. Linda from the New Orleans Gardens is here. Hi, Linda. I am so glad that you joined me tonight. I hope you were on and were able to see me share my top 10 laundry products and I think what I might do is just run through it again real quick, just to let the people that jumped on last hear about, hear about them. But I'll do that in just a minute. But yes, vinegar is very good because it's, all, because it's natural. And there are a lot of homemakers today that really don't like using a lot of chemicals in their homes. And so they wanna go more a more organic, a more environmentally friendly product way. So a lot of them are using things like vinegar and baking soda and things like that to clean their homes. And you can even use like there's a washing soda that you can use for your laundry and different things like that. Products that are very environmentally friendly. And one of these days I'm going to make my own laundry detergent and then give it a try. And I'll share that with you guys as well. So Roseanne likes to use borax to whiten clothes. I like to use borax as a detergent booster, but if I need it to be white, it's going to be oxy, oxy clean, white revive. And hey, prep for it. Prep 41. Good to have you here as well. Oh, so you use a little peroxide for lap scrubs. You know, I've not tried using peroxide in the laundry, but I do know that it is helpful. And um, that particular video from the Rachel Ray show that I'm going to link in the description box 
peroxide was one of the things that he used for a different set of, uh, uh, of stains. He talked about stains that were from like grass and that kind of thing and stains that had like blood and those kind of bodily fluids in it and other things. So, and I think peroxide was something that he used for that. So, hey, Rachel, good to have you with us. Cheryl Marshall said she's been taking my advice regarding using vinegar with the tiles and they became so fluffy. They it really does make a difference. Using that vinegar uh, in your tiles makes all the difference because your tiles become coated with that residue from the detergent and fabric softener over time. And then they're not as absorbent, but you use the vinegar and it kind of begins to strip away that residue and then it just kind of fluffs and plumps up those particles. So Danita says, don't mix vinegar with bleach. It makes toxic fumes. Yes, now you don't want to mix vinegar with bleach. If you've got vinegar in the wash, you're not putting bleach in the wash. If you've got bleach in the wash, then um, if you've got bleach in the wash, you're not putting in uh, anything else in there. It's just going to be bleach and then fabric softener. So yes, you don't want to mix those chemicals. And I do plan to do a video about you know what not to mix about that. But yes, don't mix ammonia, uh, bleach, vinegar, any of those things, because it does give off a noxious fumes. An interesting thing that you say that because, oh, about a year ago, well, not quite a year ago, but about eight months ago, the CDC put out a notice that there were many more instances of people um, having to uh, call the poison control center or go to the ER because they were getting so concerned about doing their laundry and disinfecting their homes that they were mixing products and giving off noxious fumes. So yes, don't mix bleach or vinegar or ammonia. Don't mix any of that stuff. If you use one of them, then you're only using the one, not more than one. Okay, let's see. Marky Mark says he tries to use dye free or rather she tries to use, I think I can't tell. My eyes are kind of scrunchy tonight, but Marky Mark says that um, he tries to use dye free in everything that he can because allergies are real. Yes. Don't mix vinegar with bleach. Don't mix vinegar with ammonia. Don't mix ammonia with vinegar. Don't mix bleach with anything and don't mix vinegar with anything other than your regular detergents. And Kathy Newsom said she enjoys my channel. Thank you. I love doing laundry. I really do. Now, when I was a young mom with three kids, did I love doing laundry? No, but I do enjoy it now. And let's see. Bomzi says, hello. Danita says, you're never too old to learn. That's true. Yeah, Linda, I'll give you guys a real quick recap because it's about time for me to wrap it up. So. Let me make sure I've got this situated. The hubby was down here earlier to help me. Okay, let me get this off. And usually I'm real long winded and I'm on forever, but this time I'm just trying to be bright, be fun and be done. So top 10 products must have Paracel laundry detergent because I think it is the best laundry detergent on the market. I do have some new ones that I am going to try I'm going to try this one, but I haven't tried it yet. And it's called True Earth, and it is one of those eco strips. So when I give it a try, I'll let you guys know how well I like it or not. And then my second favorite laundry detergent would be the Tide Pods. And this particular one, I didn't show you guys this, but these are the Power Pods. So look how big they are. They're pretty big. And these are also the ones, well, the pods are also the laundry products that kids were getting into thinking it was candy. So that's why Tide went to that special um, closure. And then, of course, um, Clorox bleach, because it is a disinfectant, it will disinfect against quite a few viruses that are out there. And you can also use it against the coronavirus, but you have to make sure you're following the instructions specifically or it won't work for that. And then the Lysol sanitizer, which you can use on colors and whites, but now this bleach can only be used on color safe fabrics. This you can use on any fabric and it's the Lysol. 
whitener that I love is the OxyClean White Revive. It definitely makes your whites nice and bright. And then you want to have some vinegar. Dryer sheets. I like to bounce dryer sheets when I'm using dryer sheets. But if I'm like doing my towels and linens, I use vinegar in the rinse cycle instead of fabric softener sheets because I want to get rid of some of that residue and help keep my towels fluffy. And then for the most part, I like to use these dryer woolsey balls. And if you're just joining me late, this is what they look like like a big tennis ball. Downy infusers, which infuse a very nice calming into the clothing and you put it in the wash, but it stays through the wash. It comes out in the dryer. And then um, Borax rounded out my top 10 as a detergent booster. And it's an all purpose cleaning product as well as laundry. And then my honorable mention was my Stain fighter that I made with two ounces of Dawn dishwashing liquid, two ounces of vinegar, and two ounces of water. And it helps like get rid of grease and stains and that kind of thing. So those are my must have laundry products. So now what products do you feel like you must have in your laundry room? I told you what, if I could only have 10, those are the 10 that I'd have. What would you have? So Eat to Live Strong says she likes using baking soda to neutralize. And yes, uh, baking soda is a great neutralizer. You can help to use it to help fight odors as well as the uh, borax, as well as the vinegar. They can really help to neutralize odors. And if your towels have been like in a pile and they're all damp, kids have been throwing uh, the towels in the hamper and they're kind of still damp, that kind of thing, and they're smelling a little sour, then the uh, baking soda can help with that. The vinegar can help with that as well as the borax too can help with some of that. So Vonzi said, do I know how to use laundry? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, do I know how to do laundry? I mean, I do laundry every day. So yes. Yeah, I do laundry every day. Is bluing good to use for whites? Bluing can be great for whites, but you have to make sure you use just the right amount. You got to make sure you use it well. You use it accurately because you don't want to get too much in and it's too blue. Think about when, you go, when you've been to the beauty shop and you've seen those little ladies come out and their hair is blue. Maybe their beautician added just a little bit too much bluing to that silver tint of white hair. So bluing can be good. Now, have I used bluing itself? No. But it's funny you mentioned it because a couple yesterday or the day before when I was prepping for this show, I saw the topic of bluing come up. So there's that. And, you know, Vamsi, I've been terrible about my YouTube schedule. I try to upload new videos on either Monday or Tuesday and then Friday or Saturday. But some days if life's been happening, then I don't get one out until Wednesday. But I will try to do a better job of uploading video on Tuesday and Friday. That's what I'm going to try to do Tuesday and Friday or Monday and Friday. We'll see. But that's what I'm trying to do to be better with that. Hey, Tam, it's good to have you with me as well. Um, so Tam just has vinegar, powder, soap, bleach, and a stain release. Okay. And, you know, I've got a lot of different ones. And my one sister who jumps on from time to time, she's like, why do you have so many laundry products? Well, I'm not married to any of them. I will try new things just to see how well they work. And then some of these laundry strips, I will try them just to see how well they're working so I can let all of you know what's what. And Zolt soap bars help a lot. I think that's part of what you use to make your own laundry detergent, I believe. Something like that or like sales naphtha to kind of help make your own laundry detergent. So, okay, so I want to thank you guys for jumping on with me tonight. I had not meant to be on here this long. I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, my top 10 laundry projects and let you know that if you are caring for someone who is sick with COVID-19, I've got a video that I'm going to link that shows you how to care for the clothing of someone who's sick. And then New Orleans Garden said she likes using vinegar in her wash. Yes, I forgot to mention that. So you can, if you've, if you've been dealing with odors 
in your towels or other clothing, then what you'd want to do is you'd like start your wash and you would run, say, a cup full of white vinegar, one cup of white vinegar in the wash cycle, but no detergent and nothing in the fabric softener. Just put in that one cup of white vinegar and let it run through. Once that cycles through, then you would run the wash again, only this time use your regular detergent. You could put a half a cup of white vinegar in your rinse cycle, and then that should have gotten rid of any odors that you might have. Yeah, you know what? Fabric softeners can build up a residue in the clothing, so that's why I tend not to use it anymore. So, Linda, thank you for jumping on with us. I appreciate it. And uh, unless you guys have any more pressing questions, I'm going to let you guys go. In the meantime, this is Danique Jordan saying, you're not done yet. I want you to click on the link in the description box below once it's filled out and check out the video that I'm going to post regarding what to do if you're caring for someone who is sick with COVID-19. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it.